So welcome everybody. I'm Heather Lorenz, I'm the Visual Arts Manager at the Northfield Arts Guild. And um, as you're coming in, I would just ask for you to stay muted. We are gonna have a chance for all of the artists to um, share a few thoughts. And so we'll ask you to unmute then, but if you can just stay muted. Hey Beth. While we're going, uh, because it'll, it um, highlights on the active speaker. So we just uh, wanna keep everybody to focus on the artist that's talking. So thanks so much. Um, this is our 2020 annual members exhibition, virtual reception. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm Heather Lorenz, I'm the Visual Arts Manager at the Northfield Arts Guild. I'm going to go to the next slide. Um, I wanted to start by thanking the Minnesota State Arts Board for their generous support of the, of the Northfield Arts Guild. Um, and thank you to Rebound Enterprises. They are this year's gallery season sponsor for our entire season of gallery exhibitions. Um, and to all of our members, donors, and volunteers, uh, you make it possible for us to continue making great art happen in our community. So thank you so much. Uh, I'm so glad that you joined us tonight for this virtual reception. Uh, just wanted to let everybody know how this event is gonna go. Um, I'm gonna, this, we're in the welcome part right now. I'm gonna go over a series of exhibition photos of the overall exhibition. Um, and then we will recognize and briefly hear from each of the participating artists that are in attendance. Um, followed by reflections of four member artists that have kindly um, uh, offered to uh, share some reflections. Uh, and then we're going to end with the costume contest. And so I'm very excited to see all of you who have attended in costume. Uh, just a point to that. Um, if you look through all the people who are attending and throughout the event, um, you can vote for your favorite costume in the chat box. That's how we're going to, to do the voting. And then at the end, we're gonna tally up uh, who the winners are. So just keep checking as people join in um, on the photo costume contest. So here uh, are some photos of the exhibition. Uh, this year, it, it is our 31st uh, year of, of showing this um, annual member show. And it features 63 artists, including eight who have who are participating for the first time. Um, I especially look forward to this exhibition every year. Um, it is our chance to showcase our talented artists, uh, member artists, um, and the talent we have in our region is really incredible and inspiring. And thank you to all of the participating artists this year who adjusted with us um, and have to follow the new parameters in making all these um, exhibitions happen from the drop off to the pickup uh, and everything in between and how we're viewing and getting together to celebrate the artists. So just thanks for adjusting with us. And I also wanna give a special shout out to Wendell Arkin, Dan Shoger and Tim Lloyd uh, for in helping install this exhibition uh, while following the distancing guidelines. Uh, they all serve on our volunteer gallery committee um, and it is really fun to come in after everybody's dropped off their artwork and you see this variety of work in here and how do you make a cohesive show with this variety of work and so I just I want to say um, thank you so much to them and by the way Jan Shoger is one of our volunteers of the year so congrats to her. Um, just a note that yeah, just a note that everybody who's participating in this exhibition was limited to one piece. And so it's um, it's really fun to see which piece they chose to showcase in this exhibition. Um, and I am always impressed by this exhibition every year. I love this show. Um, but this year it just it feels extra special. Um, and I every time I've come into the gallery, I've just been um, had such a sense of joy um, and been really admiring all of the work in here uh, and discovering something new every time that I come in and look. So I, this show has just been wonderful this year. Uh, if you haven't yet had a chance to take in this exhibition, you have one more day uh, tomorrow, Friday from noon to five. Uh, we do have in-person hours. And, uh, but don't worry, if you won't be able to come into the Guild tomorrow, there is a virtual tour uh, of this exhibition. So you'll be able to see the artworks up close. Uh, and every show since March that we've done has been up, um, we've done a virtual tour uh, and they're all on the Guild's YouTube channel. So that's where you'll find those videos. 
And I want to send a huge thank you to Cosmo Esplin, who is our Arts Advocate of the Year. Um, he worked his editing magic, and uh, without him, we could not have done all these videos. So thanks to Cosmo for, for helping us out with all of those. So now we are getting into the artist recognition por uh, portion. And this is where um, each of the artists who are here that are in attendance, I'm gonna pull up the participating list here. Um, as we get, I mean, they're all gonna show up as images in alphabetical order by last name of all the artists that are participating in this show. As we come to you, uh, as we show your artwork, I'm just gonna ask that you unmute yourself um, let us know 15 to 30 seconds. We're just all going to briefly share. Um, how long have you been a guild member? Uh, approximations are just fine. Um, and how did you choose the piece that you're exhibiting in the show? Because you were limited to one. How did you make that decision? Was there something about it that you, made you choose it? And if you'd rather not share, that's absolutely fine. I would just ask that you'd unmute and, uh, Tell us hi, and so we can give a chance to acknowledge you. So I'm gonna, these are all of the artists that are participating in this exhibition. There's 63 members, which is really exciting. And I'm gonna move on. So we're gonna start with Connie Albers. And um, just until it's your turn, I'll just ask that you unmute or that you mute until it's your turn to talk and we'll, we'll be going in alphabetical order on that. Yeah. Connie, is you here? Well, um, I've been a Guild member off and on over the years from when my kids were little. Um, more recently, though, I'd say it's probably been a good three, four years straight. Um, I chose this piece. I like photography a lot. I do a lot of photography. Um, since my SLR became broken, I've kind of gotten into iPhone photography and I found some fun little apps I like playing around with. I love fall. Last year, we happened to be out in Colorado where my children live. And I took this picture and it reminds me of Colorado. It reminds me of fall, my favorite season. And I love it. So that's why I chose that one. Thank you, Connie. Allison, if you wouldn't mind sharing with us. Hi, I, I have been a member since we moved to Northfield from Nebraska, almost three years. And I chose this piece because it's seasonal and because it's loose. And that's the style I've been painting in most recently. Thank you. Thank you. Wendell Arneson. Hi, um, I've been a member since I moved to Northfield in about 1978, so 40 plus years or more. Um, this is this work is uh, related to a new series that I've done for the last four or five months. Um, it's an environmentally conscious body of abstract work that has specificity, but also some ambiguity to it that allows the viewer to <coughs> And it's primarily, they're all based on the small area just about five blocks from my home, which is just pretty cool. So enjoy it. Thank you, Wendell. And Robert Christie, I don't think he's on with us. Uh, this is an acrylic painting of Spring Creek, which is here in town. And Gwen? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, I chose this piece. It's called the portal uh, because it just helps me transform from so many different things into something else from mundane everyday work life to a vacation to adventure um, imagination is is your only limit on this piece and um, it just makes me really happy so I wanted to share it with other people thanks so much Christy Clark. Uh, Christy's piece is um, an earthenware piece and, um, and it is, I think it's wood fired, I think. And Mark Dalen. Mark Dalen. 
Mark, are you on with us tonight? This is an oil painting. And Patsy Dew, uh, this is actually one of her photographs that she's transferred on to polymer clay and then made this box from it. Uh, Tony Easterson made this uh, fiber. It's a mixed media piece that actually has some beadwork on it as well. Jill Ewald. I see Ken's name here. Jill, are you on? I, yes. Wonderful. There. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I had to unmute. <laughs> um, this piece is, I have been a part of the Arts Guild since shortly after we moved to town in 1979. So in, I'm sorry, 1977, <laughs> the summer of 1977. And we have been involved in the Arts Guild ever since that time. So I chose this piece because it is sort of the colors of this time of year, but because to me, it's called Marching, it's the title of it. And it speaks to me about a lot of, what we are going through right now um, in all kinds of ways. So just uh, the pandemic and the um, Black Lives Matter and forest fires, you know, just kind of everything right now and the need that we ha all have desperately, the need for art. Thanks so much for sharing. Julie Fackler, are you on? You know, this is a, a Raku piece that Julie created um, of her cat Indy, called Rainbow Indy. Uh, D Fox Grover, give you a chance to jump on. This is a, a mixed media piece, an acrylic painting, and he built the frame. All right. Mary Ellen, I saw you on. You want to unmute yourself? Yeah. Great. Um, Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how long I've been a guild member, but I think about um, 15 to 20 years, something like that. I'm guessing. Um, and I've uh, been always been interested in uh, both colors and um, textures and shapes and how how um, natural things happen that make for very interesting compositions. So um, that's why I chose this one. Uh, and it's also um, one of my newer uh, one of my newer photographs. Thanks, Mary Ellen. Uh, this piece by Joyce Francis. Uh, is a mixed media piece, um, fiber on paper, embroidery. Uh, Juan Freed, uh, this piece is actually an, a pendant and it's part of a series of uh, a grouping of two. So when you look at the video or come see it in person, you'll see two pieces. Um, Gail Gates, I think you are on with us tonight. Gail? Uh, so this photograph here is one that she, like Connie, um, does iPhone manipulation um, to make it to em emote emotions uh, after she takes the photograph. Mary Rose Gondek. Uh, this is a oil and um, cold wax piece by Mary Rose titled Paradise. And this batik by Susan Hayes uh, is titled Overlay, and that speaks to it. It's a batik. Um, Reed Hendershot made this box, and it, you can actually come and open up the, the two halves here, and it clips together. Sonia, I see you on. You're up. Sonia. I think you have to unmute. Mute. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. I'm not good technologically. Fine. Um, been a member of the guild since we moved back to Northfield 13 years ago. 
I work up in the pottery studio, playing in the mud, love making mugs, bowls, utilitarian wares. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Sonia. Christine, Christine Height. Uh, this is a porcelain piece titled Flora Fauna, a uh, footed bowl. Jerry, I saw you on. I think you're here. You're all yep. I've been a guild member for maybe three, four years. Um, and I'm a photographer now. And uh, I do a lot of architecture. Probably 90% of my photographs are bird photography. I'm also a birder. But I do a lot of um, close up um, macro photography. And this is one of a series of macro photographs of, um, of mushrooms that I did this year. And I like this one because of its architectural appearance. Thank you. And Lori Hunkerholt is, I think, one of our newer members. Um, you might recognize her work from the Riverfront Fine Arts Festival. And this is um, a sewn woven uh, fiber basket with Root River um, rock that she pulled from the Root River. Uh, Rosemary James, are you on? This is a fused glass um, piece and it's got uh, dichroic glass in it that makes it really shimmery. It's really pretty in person. Jay Johnson. This is a photograph of white pines. And Kirsten, this is Kirsten Johnson. This is a, um, a mixed media piece, um, abstract piece. Becky, I know you're on. Uh, yep. Um, this was this is a um, a pastel painting. Um, I was inspired to paint this because in the summer, I actually saw this beautiful grass and I thought I can't wait till winter when it snows, um, because I think it'll be so beautiful against the snow. And so I waited. The first snow it came last year, later than this year, probably in November. And I ran out and um, took a bunch of photographs and. Painted it. Thanks, Becky. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me too, uh, put those votes for best costume. You can start voting if you want to, anytime. Um, David Killett, I think it's really interesting that by alphabetical order, the two of the same kind of area ended up next to each other. And this is an acrylic painting in a similar part of our region. Uh, Judy Kinstead, this is a mosaic of, um, of multiple glass pieces and shards that she put all together. It's really intricate. Marsha Kitchell, I know you're with us tonight. I'm here. Hi, everyone. I um, have been a Guild member since the 1980s. I started taking classes in the 70s. I probably didn't stay, start paying right away, um, but a very long time. And the reason I painted um, Ford Street before development or south of Ford Street is because I saw more houses taking up more land in Northfield and I just wanted to capture it before it was gone. It was a stormy day. I painted outside and everything was blowing around, but in the end it was worth it. Thanks so much, Marcia. Uh, this piece by Matt Coaster is um, is an oil painting um, called uh, Sacha Territory. And um, Ricky Cole Nelson, are you on with us tonight? This is a mixed media piece where it actually opens up and uh, the doors, it's called Open Door or Dora Pope. Um, I've been a member of the Guild for about a dozen years, probably, and I work up in the clay studio in the mud with Sonia. Um, one day I stuck a face on a mug and the next thing I knew I was sticking feet on them and um, they make me happy. So that's why I do them. <laughs> Thanks so much. Uh, and Marilyn Larson, uh, you would recognize 
her labyrinths from our Centered Mindfulness show um, a couple of shows ago. And this is called Pleiades Path. Uh, these are earrings that I made. There's nothing like a deadline. Oh, I've been a member for over five years of the guild. Um, and I made these the night before the show went in. So I had a deadline and, you know, spurs a little creativity. That's how all of those ended up being here. Uh, Glennis, I need to go back. Um, these are a grouping. There are actually little swallows, uh, nesting swallows on here, on these ceramic jars. Miho, I see you here tonight. Hi. Um, so I, I, I have been a guild member uh, only for two years. Uh, so my husband went to, uh, I'm from Japan, and my husband went to St. Alf and his, par uh, his parents, uh, my parents in law living in Northfield, and I'm always interested in uh, your gallery, and I, vis I have visited your gallery uh, sometimes uh, before I became a member. And then the so last year, I finally contacted you, Heather, <laughs> You respond to me, and uh, so I, I'm very thankful I got opportunities to show my paintings uh, at the gallery and also at the hospital uh, this spring. So, um, yeah, I'm very thankful uh, of it. And uh, yeah, so why I chose this piece is because this is one of my newest paintings, and um, recently. I have two kids, I'm so busy, uh, and I don't have much time to paint recently, but uh, I'm trying to um, uh, use new, new techniques. Um, so I use some new techniques on this painting, so I wanted to show it to, um, show, show it uh, at the gallery. Awesome. Yep. Thanks so much, Miho. <laughs> Thank you. This is uh, Piece by Chrissy Lilly is an oil painting called Dream Big. Uh, and Tim Lloyd, I know you're here tonight. I mute. <laughs> Tim, are you there? Tim and Jan? We talk and uh, we're muted. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> Uh, I've been a gallery member or a, a Northfield uh, Arts Guild member since 1964 or 65 when I first started teaching drawing there. Anyhow, these, uh, this piece that I, that I have in the show, series of three, I call it triptych, uh, is a rework of some pieces that I did a little while ago, but I was really excited by the difference that they became as I reworked them. Thanks. Thank you. And Jean, this one is titled The Artist, and it's a mixed uh, media fiber piece um, that's about life size. Uh, Dennis McClintock, are you here today? Oh, this one is a, a photograph titled Fall Islands. Leo, you're up. I know you're here. Yes, I'm here. Um, so uh, I've been a guild member, I think, since I started doing the art fair in 1994. I'm not sure if I was a member all through that time, but um, at least I've been around since then. And um, this piece is titled um, uh, Foxes Chasing the Moon. You can't see the foxes, but they're down there. And I did a series of pieces to get me through this time just as an assignment of revisiting my old uh, titles of pieces that I had done in the past and sold. And I still have these title cards that I made that I put a lot of work into. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought I'll make, I'll make those pieces again in a completely different way. So the first uh, iteration of this piece was actually a wall piece. So it was kind of a fun challenge to do that. And I um, was going to deliver this piece myself and I figured I should bring something that's not very easy to mail. <laughs> so I picked this piece. <laughs> Thank you, Leo. And Rick Middlestadt, this is uh, an acrylic painting titled um, Spring, Spring um, has to do with the spring, with the light. Um, 
and Paula Moon. This one is called The COVID's Came to Town, and it's a mixed media piece. Cheryl's uh, mixed media piece here is titled Murmur, and Catherine Nori. Hi, everybody. Um, I have been active with the Guild since 2000, so 20 years. And I know that because this is my 21st year of teaching, and I've been hanging art shows for the kiddos um, at the Guild for that long. Um, this piece helps me be calm. I love the blue for many reasons. Um, and I also teach printmaking. So it seems to fit with my life that I can have access to making it. And, and I, nature really has been getting me through this time. Thank you. Uh, Davy Nice's piece here is called uh, Winter Snowfall. It's part of a series. And um, uh, Joe Olson, this one's titled America. And I know that she's been around uh, with the guild for a while, for a, a long while. Uh, Jackie Oman Clinton, I'm not sure if you're on with us tonight. Um, this is a watercolor titled um, Winter Honeymoon 1977. And Amy Pagel, I know you're with us tonight. She's on with Hello, everyone. I am here tonight. And actually, the piece that's shown on the screen is not the piece that's actually in the gallery, but it's a part of the series, the same series that I did. Um, I'm This is my first member show, although I've been a part of the Guild for 20 years since we've moved here in 2000 and, well, I guess in 2000. And um, I've been a member, but I've also been a teacher and a student and a parent of other students, many, 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 many involvements in plays and art classes. And I can't be more grateful for, for all the Guild does. Thank you. Is Audrey on? Okay, so oh, she's busy at school, I know that. Oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yep, and this is a piece that's a cake stand actually, uh, titled Downtown Northfield, a ceramic piece. And uh, Sue Pariso, um, this is a, a serving bowl, actually. So it's a, a top shot of a serving bowl, ceramic, wood-fired ceramic piece. Barb Pendergrass, you on with us tonight? This is a watercolor um, titled Lakeshore. Claudia. Hi, um, I've been, a. I, I looked it up actually, I've been a member since 2012 and I know that because I have a postcard from a show that I had at the Guild and that's the reason I joined because um, it was one of my first sort of major shows. So it was really fun for me. Um, I chose this piece, partly it's one of the most recent things I've done. Uh, partly a lot of my work is um, ceramic wall installation and it's hard to hang, but these particular pieces are relatively easy to hang comparatively. Um, I, I've, this piece was inspired by my, I get a lot of my solace from Northern Minnesota and I've been really upset about the possibility of mining on the edge of the boundary waters. And so I was trying to visualize the absence of the trees that would be threatened by that kind of pollution. So that's where that, that piece came from. Thanks, Claudia. And we'll be hearing from you in a little bit too. Hi, uh, Cheryl Lumet. I see you're on. Hi, hi there. Um, I've been a member of the Guild for about two years. And hello? <laughs> and um, and this piece, I, I do a lot of different things, um, printmaking, drawing, collage, watercolor ink, all kinds of stuff. But um, this piece is fabric and I've been learning to do some natural dye work with Judy Say Willis over the past year or so. And I've really enjoyed that. And this is dyed with indigo um, from her vat and, um, you know, tied and dyed. And it's part of my, it's part of what I'm calling my quixotic 
quarantine mask project that I'm doing during this time of the pandemic, which are, they're art masks. They're, um, they will go on your face, but they're not made to be, um, they're not made to be protective. <laughs> they're made to be, um, you know, I don't know. I guess it's the irony of it all somehow. Not that I'm not a mask wearer. I'm a, I'm a devoted mask wearer, but um, so this one, and this one as it hangs in the sh show actually has a metal frame that it's hanging in that my husband made. So looks a little better in the show, I think, than here, but that's what this piece is. Thank you. Thanks, Cheryl. Uh, this piece by Nancy Rexigal um, is a uh, acrylic painting. Mike, I, I know you're on, right? Michael Root. Uh, this is a, actually a photograph um, then put onto aluminum. And Jam, you're up. Hi there. Um, I'm, I'm one of the, uh, oh, see. Okay. I'm one of the early members of the guild, so I've been a member 60 years, 60 plus years now. Um, this watercolor painting is uh, about the cycle of, of a plant in the four seasons, and here are the two late leaves that are hangers on as the snow begins to fly and uh, they're gorgeous even with all their bumps and warts and they, the border refers to their early life and uh, the berries that were hanging around them and uh, that sort of thing. So it's called pure magic, which I think that process is. Thanks so much, Jan. Oh, this piece here by Cindy Starkey Robinson is actually, it's a very, it's a small piece. I know a lot of you are familiar with seeing her larger pieces, but it's about, about yay big. Um, and it's all quilted and mixed media and, and different fabrics. Um, Mike Stockley, I know you're here tonight. Yeah, hi, um, Mike Stockline. I've uh, been a member for one year. I've been a participant of art most of my life and um, recently, I've been doing a lot of wood carving, and this uh, particular piece, um, I titled it Fighting um, Red Tail Hawk. Seems like I've been doing a lot of fighting um, since November 9th of 2016. And <laughs> in making this piece, I was even fighting a cardinal that was building a nest right above my outside um, uh, studio. So I had to relocate to another part of my yard to do the uh, to the sculpture, but uh, anyway, I thought it turned out pretty cool. And so just keeping up the fight. Good to be with you folks. Thanks so much, Mike. Rebecca Tully. I've uh, been a member, we moved here 60 years ago. I've been a member for five. And uh, this particular, painting and I'm going to get my glasses on too. It was inspired by the folk Lorca. Mm -hmm. I was downtown Northfield and they were putting it on on the street and I was quite taken aback by the colors and the movement um, and it was just beautiful. So I really enjoyed it. It's an oil painting. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Steve. I just unmuted. I'm really getting good at this stuff. Um, uh, this piece, uh, and I should say I'm from Minneapolis and I like getting down to Northfield because uh, that's where I spent f four years on the rock, so to speak, at St. Olaf trying to uh, get an English degree. And uh, anyway, this piece I selected because uh, I just thought it held together well as a composition and it's, it's basically a concept about space junk that's just suddenly stopped for me so that I could enjoy, even though, you know, the actual process was not in outer space, as you probably guessed. But um, this one was just fun in color and the lines had to work. There was no line that could be out of place uh, before I started in on some other meticulous work with those 
little tiny rectangle. So anyway, okay. there you go. Great. And we'll be hearing from you again very shortly too. Great. Um, Kathy. Got it unmuted. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathy and a recent new member for about a year. Um, I was very encouraged by my sister-in-law, Cheryl. <laughs> and um, because of this year has been very challenging, I love nature, all its possibilities. And this spring with everything changing, it um, never fails. It, the tulips came up and bloomed. Um, and also besides flowers, I love birds. And I've done a few heron um, quilts, art quilts, and I wanted bright, bright colors and something a little bit simpler than the previous ones I've made. So I thought during quarantine, um, it's called entwined during quarantine. So it's like you go back to your family and you share um, precious time with your family because of the quarantine. So I want to show that um, by the birds dancing or just really enjoying themselves. So that's um, why I made it. <laughs> Bright colors and um, home life. Good. Awesome, thank you so much. I'm gonna momentarily stop sharing so that we can see everybody. And if everybody wants to unmute, this is the time, like, let's give each other a round of applause. Like, this is just a fantastic show. So, So, thank you all for sharing, sharing your thoughts. Um, I'm gonna start screen sharing back into the slide show. And we're getting up to the artist um, reflections part. So, so thanks so, so much for muting yourselves again because we're going to be hearing from four member artists who have uh, graciously allowed us to hear their reflections on how has their studio practice been affected by the last seven months um, and how have you been inspired to create during this time um, and what are they excited about pursuing uh, next artistically I just thought that we all could benefit from hearing how people have continued to create during this time. And I think their stories will resonate um, for a lot of us artists that are, are here. So we're gonna turn it over to Catherine Noy. Thank you, Heather. Uh, it's so great to see everybody tonight. I think it's during these Zoom sessions that we realize how much we miss contact and being together. And it would be so fun to clink glasses at the Guild, but we'll take this. We'll take the safety of this. So I'm Catherine Nori. Uh, I live in Northfield and I've been a teacher at Northfield High School for 21 years. I teach art, <laughs> funny, right? Uh, but I teach art at Northfield High School. I went to St. Olaf and got my studio art education degree from there. Um, and how has this time affected me? It's affected me in every single way. It, it hasn't not touched me. I have two young boys and we're living you know, this strange school year together. Um, but this was at the beginning. This was way back at the beginning of COVID. And it was Heather and I talking on the phone, you know, once every couple of days, how are we going to put together this art show for these sweet senior people who have been working so hard and just deserve every piece of this show. And, you know, a, a pure view, pure virtual show just didn't seem right. And it didn't seem fair. Um, and so we, we put our heads together and figured out a way to, to put it on the walls. And so Heather and my dear colleague, Karna Hauk and myself, the three of us put together the show and it was, it was magic. It was so cool. It was so cool. I got to go visit the homes of my students and pick up their work in boxes. And, you know, and this was early, this was early in our kind of lockdown time. And we were trying to be very safe, um, but I just couldn't be more proud of of what was able to be put together. The, the students were just amazing. And, you know, 
that really was um, a bright shining spot in a really scary time of distance teaching, like not knowing how to distance teach. I'd never done that before. Um, I did these Zoom things every day. I got really good at it. <laughs> um, but you know, to be able to see these kiddos was pretty amazing to be able to share their work. My summer garden kept me so happy. Um, so what inspires me was, yes, the tool, I heard somebody say the tulips coming up. It's so reliable. I actually, at some point thought, are they going to come up? Maybe they won't come up. Maybe they don't want to come up, but they came up. And so being outside really inspires me. Nature is a big part of my artwork. It always has been, I grew up on a farm. And so being surrounded by nature and, and the outdoors has been a big part of my world. So I'm, I'm happiest outside and painting. So um, and then this is kind of my recent going back to school in this hybrid world. Uh, I took some shots of this classroom like I've always dreamt of having tiny classes or smaller class sizes. I usually have around 35 to 40 people in that room. And now all of a sudden to be able to have 12, 15, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, but it is a new world with the masks on. Relationships are really hard to form. Um, but we're doing our best and we're really working and the students are so happy to have art. I mean, art couldn't be a better thing to teach in the middle of a pandemic. I, I'm so fortunate to be able to have that. So that's just a glimpse of my everyday world. Um, as as a, maybe the next one, Heather, what I find myself doing a lot of the time is I'm making examples because I have to do things on video, I have to be ready, I have to be one step maybe ahead or at the same step as my students so I know what they're doing. So, you know, to get us all back together, I had a lot of kids with anxiety. They weren't so sure that what they learned in watercolor last year would translate to this year because we weren't together. So that middle picture is of some watercolor stickers we, we had fun, we painted all sorts of our summer adventures. So places we traveled and things that we saw and just ideas. So those were my stickers. And I really felt like I needed to do it with them so we could all be vulnerable and we could all be present for each other and to be each other's cheerleaders. Um, and, and the black and white, that's an assignment that I've been teaching for 21 years. And not until this year did I think I should probably just do it with them. <laughs> so my artwork has turned into my teaching artwork, which is a great outlet and it feels very purposeful. I feel like I'm able to help my students feel good and see that I'm doing it with them. Um, we're all in this together. So that's a really great thing. Um, and then the last slide that Heather will share with you it's a picture of these paintings are done by my students. They turned them in last week. So the fact that art can be created in the middle of this crazy thing, my students are still vibrant. They're still flourishing. They are sophomores, juniors, and seniors who love to paint. They love to draw. And you can see, I just, I grabbed four screenshots of a video that I took of their work. That's actually how I got Heather these pictures. So. I mean, everything's kind of moving and in flux, but they're so happy to be together, um, even just for two days a week. Um, it's a crazy scenario, but this is what gives me hope. If we're supposed to look towards the future, my future right now is getting all of these young people in a good place um, to hopefully exit a pandemic and feel like we actually did some great stuff while we were in it. Um, but I'm, I'm really, every day inspired by my students. They help me be better. So thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> We're gonna hear from Allison. Allison, are you there? I'm gonna have to unmute. Yes. Thanks, Great. Heather. There we go. <laughs> Hi there. All right. The past seven months have been a bit of a roller coaster for my studio practice. In February, when everyone was stocking up on toilet paper, I was actually stocking up on watercolor paper. And I was expecting to be holed up in my home painting in my studio, but that wasn't exactly the case. And here are some examples of some greeting cards that I painted for my church during that time. Next slide, please. And then here are some more cards that I painted. 
I also had several commissioned watercolor paintings scheduled through June. One commission was of a train depot, another was of a flower garden, and another was of a stone well. So beautiful photos and, and commissions to keep me busy. And commissions are always wonderful, but these were extra special when I didn't feel inspired to paint at all from mid-March through, through July, really. My husband and children were home with me each day, and that may have been the reason. I was painting, or I wasn't painting, but I was, I was baking and cooking and walking and basically spending time with my family. And I was enjoying my tight family cocoon. Next slide, please. It wasn't until August that I felt motivated to paint again. I saw a photo of a ballerina and she was surrounded by soft light. And it just really inspired me to paint loosely, something that I had really never done before. And so I posted the finished painting on social media and the response I received was very encouraging. And suddenly I found inspiration in everything, primarily nature, but even in silly things like a blobfish. And the ideas started to just roll in so much so that I still cannot keep up with them. And I'm currently participating in a month long Instagram drawing challenge based on the theme of Halloween. And every other day I draw and post a Halloween drawing of an assigned creature, so like a witch or a vampire. And that's been a lot of fun. And on this slide, this is a recent painting that I completed. I'm also creating a series of light infused paintings. And you can see in this painting, I have light coming in through the tree limbs and between the tree trunks to illuminate the path. Because although too many people have experienced darkness over the past few months, I still believe there's light. And it may just be my rose colored glasses talking, <laughs> but, but I really do want everybody to see the light. So I'm currently creating a series of light infused paintings. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Steve. Unmute. Oh, thank you. And uh, I forgot to say three years a member. So for the record, yeah, I got a great start uh, here in Northfield with a show a while back too. And uh, this, this piece uh, is indicative of some of the things I could continue to do. Um, we have a 10 year old who makes a daily visit um, to do math and art and imagine gym class outside in the cold where uh, Mr. Watson, former art teacher is now part Phi Ed teacher. And um, just thinking about the crazy busy Catherine Nori um, as a teacher, I know I left some of that behind and there was some room to do some of the things that I wanted to do. So um, I have, I, my, my time has been curtailed, but that just breeds a little more hunger, which then breeds some of the things that just happen kind of naturally with good, good efforts at trying to get the lines to say something. And then I give it a name, this one, this one, you know, there's no plant out there, they're named Flowering Cobra, but um, they joined up with this flower design to uh, say something interesting with a kind of an abstracted cloud and sun, sunlit background. So might as well take another look at something else here. We could look at the next slide. Um, I, have to, um, <clears throat> I have to mention that this one, um, was right in the middle of you know the COVID activities, but it had a had a really positive um, composition for me. And I thought um, originally it didn't have that face, um, and I knew something had to happen with the face that made it fly a little bit better because this this phrase comes from that musical, the Broadway musical Showboat. But I turned it around. Oh, that that's what that noise was. Okay. I turned it around because I knew that uh, one of the projects I'd done with kids was birds got to swim, fish got to fly. And so um, I actually put them on, on a task to uh, put their birds in the water and the fish in the sky. And so when this happened, I thought, oh, I got to go back there and play with it myself because it's my turn now. 
at any rate, I did want to mention too, I'm going to hold up a scissors just like Catherine had in her picture. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Children's scissors. And so I got to read this to you real quick. Um, I stood in front of my kids and I said, I'm going to create a shape that's never been seen before in the history of the universe. And the kids go, what, what? And then I proceed to cut out a shape that has a really interesting set of line cuts. And eventually they get into it and um, you know, there's success and then they get to embellish their piece. And I think some of what you see with this is that freedom to go for it, go your way, go anyway, and see what evolves. And so um, the designs I've been working on, and we can look at that third one, um, that, that particular one also has a very um, dramatic line play right in the middle. Um, and I knew that it was sharp edged and it had, it had a sense of um, something much different. It wasn't the joyful sense. It was more of the cutting, the cutting and the, eventually I worked it to the point where I could call it um, Mother Earth Harvested, which has, you know, it has a darker theme, but I, I just felt this held together um, not only as a kind of a tight composition, but also there was messaging that sometimes comes out just because you played with the shapes, played with the color and uh, enjoyed it in a joyful way that doesn't always turn out as a joyful message. So this one was, this one was a joy like, like the other ones. And I don't know, Heather, if you, did you have that? Oh, here it is. So what's in the future? Uh, that, that's a good question. Um, I have three or four sketches that, well, they don't look anything like this. This is unique, of course, but uh, I've got to read the title. That The title's already in place, and it's, um, it's Cuttlefish Becomes Jabberwock. And you know that um, nature has, has a lot of intelligence down there. I think it says marine intelligence above that. And so I'm waiting for this one to come out. Um, maybe a little differently. I think the re rectangles are still going to push me to the limit, but I'm going to have fun with this one. I hope, hope we get to see it in the future. And thank you for the opportunity, Heather and uh, the Guild. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for sharing, Steve. Yay. You're welcome. Going to go to Claudia. You're up. Okay. <laughs> Unmute. I am unmuted, yes. so you, you can go ahead. Okay. Um, so a week before the stay-at-home order went into place, I installed this commission, which was part of the series that the piece in the show is from. So it's, again, it's trees from the Boundary Waters that I'm, um, that I, I feel are threatened by what's going on in the world. So um, I, it was very satisfying to install this work. I know it was close. I know it was really close to the um, stay at home order because I remember feeling quite uncomfortable going into someone's home <laughs> in there trying to keep my distance and all that sort of thing. But um, so I installed this piece and I was kind of at a stopping point, which was probably a good thing because since my studio is not in my home, um, I rent studio space and I also have um, studio mates. So one of the things that happened as soon as the stay at home order went into place is that I just basically couldn't go work. That worked out okay for the first month or so. Um, my 27 year old daughter moved in with us and it, we had a great deal of fun doing all the same kinds of things that Allison was talking about. We did a lot of baking and cooking. I think we baked, we cooked everything that she, she fondly had nostalgia for from her childhood. I don't want to know how this affected our health, but <laughs> we had a good time. Um, after, after about a month, um, it started becoming possible for me to go to my studio although the hours were limited that the building was open and I was trying to coordinate with my studio mates to make sure we didn't overlap too much. Um, and so the, the obvious thing for me to do was to continue this series. And that's, um, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. And that's where the piece 
that's in the show came from. So then I decided to do a little bit more of an expansion of the birch theme because that one really appealed to me. So um, I was just working on variations of the imagery there. And um, after I did that, I kind of came to a screeching halt in terms of inspiration. I really was just not quite sure what to do next. And it was sort of trying to think of some things. I was kind of going to the studio just because I felt like I needed a change of scenery, playing with clay, but not quite sure what to do. And um, was and incredibly fortunate in that someone that I know um, contacted me about, could I please, they just bought a new house and they had this giant wall and could I please do a commission for them? So that's what this slide is. Um, so I spent the whole summer and this work goes back to the work that I was doing previously and that I've been doing for the last 10 years, very similar to the kind of work that I had at the Guild in 2012. Um, work that was based on using terracotta elements, all hand built elements and playing with pattern and texture and arrangement on the wall to try to generate a sense of movement. Um, the piece, it was a delight to have this to work on because like I said, I was not feeling particularly inspired and this gave me kind of some external structure to just kind of to do something that wasn't totally new to me, but play with some variations on something that I felt I knew how to do. So I installed that piece at the end of August and um, headed off to the Boundary Waters for two weeks. And when I came back, um, I found myself in the same position I had beforehand where I really wasn't quite sure where to, where to go next. And my usual cure for lack of inspiration is to take a class. So um, what this piece, this uh, image illustrates here is that the class I ended up, one of the classes I ended up taking was a class on um, printing on clay. And um, so I just started playing around with printing on some pieces that I already had lying around the studio. This is a piece that I, um, I was doing a series of, tiles that were animals that are um, threatened specifically in Minnesota. So there's a particular species of bat that is on the threatened species list in Minnesota. So another one of those absences that I'm mourning in these pieces. But I, I enjoy the idea of trying to add a little bit more depth to those pieces by having just a little bit of very faint imagery. So that was kind of fun. I have no idea where that's going. Um, the other thing I did, <laughs> I know nothing about watercolor. So um, one of the things I've been doing is um, this allows me to do something when I'm at home and can't go to the studio because somebody else is there taking up space and breathing the air more importantly. So this is the very, one of the very first pieces I did. And it's, you know, it was just fun. Um, and so I've been continuing to play around with that. What I'm excited about right now is actually somewhat different. I mean, I'm, I don't know where the watercolor or the screen printing will eventually end up. What I am excited about is that the other thing I've been doing is I've been um, listening to a lot of, um, watching a lot of videos about technique, hand building technique, because one of the things that COVID did to me is it made me really think about the basic things that we need around us every day. And it started me thinking that I would love to go back to making some functional pieces. When I first started working with clay, I did made a lot of pots and I made a lot of hand-built pots. And so I started thinking really hard about hand-building pots again. And um, this week, I made my first hand-built pots in years and they didn't turn out too badly for a first try. So I'm pretty excited about continuing that. In fact, I was so excited that I had trouble sleeping last night because I was thinking about all the things I could do next. <laughs> so, so I'm feeling like I'm coming back to life. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing. And I'm um, gonna move on to, yes, okay. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you to the four of you for sharing your reflections. And I know those stories 
um, when you shared a little bit of them when we were talking before, I just, I'm like, I know other people are gonna wanna hear this and it's gonna be an encouragement because uh, we're all going through very similar situations. So thank you for sharing those reflections. Um, and uh, this is the time when we're gonna move on to the costume contest. So I'm gonna stop sharing so that we can see everybody again. And this is your last chance to, in the chat box, to vote for your, uh, your favorite costume. Um, and so I'll just give us a couple of minutes to, or a minute or so to more, some more votes. And I'm so, thank you all for, hi Mark, thanks for coming, yep. And hi Jean too, I know we had some people come in a little bit later, it's just wonderful that you came in anytime, you're welcome anytime. So good, get some more votes here. One more minute here. Where I'm do we do it? Embrace the, we're close to Halloween and here's a chance to break out your costume. <laughs> we could share it publicly. Mm -hmm. All right, we're getting down to last 30 seconds. All right, and drum roll. Third place is Becky the Unicorn, yay. <laughs> so she's going to win a uh, $25 gift certificate, good for the shopper classes. Um, second place, Allison, the hippie, woohoo! <laughs> awesome, congrats. And our big winner, Catherine, Catherine Nori, <laughs> the VJ. So congratulations. <laughs> uh, I, will get, I will connect with all of you to, um, to get your gifts to you. Um, I'm going to share. No, I'm just going to stay on our screen right here. I just want to say um, uh, to anybody who wants to take in the show, we have one more chance to come in today or tomorrow between the noon and five. Um, that it's always a <laughs> Becky's got grandkids. That's great. Hi. I know. <laughs> no, sorry. No, you're just fine. That's this time that we're in. Um, the Guild's downtown building is open every week from Wednesday through Friday from noon to five. And then in November, we'll be adding a Saturday um, from 11 to four, so some open hours on that day. Um, details, visit our website, northfieldartsguild.org. Um, thank you so much for joining us. If you want to unmute and just, yeah, and have any more conversation, I'll leave this up for another you know, few minutes. And, but um, thank you so much for being here. This was really thank you, Heather. Thank you, thank you, Heather. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you yeah. Thank you, Wendell. Great. And Jan, probably for hanging. Thanks, everybody. Yes, thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Lovely. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> Juan, thank you so much for sharing, everybody. Thanks for being here. I don't know how to turn it off. <laughs>